in my previous video, I showed you how to onboard your Industrial Edge Management onto the Industrial Edge Hub. Uh, if you haven't seen it, there's a link above. In this video, I'm going to show you how to onboard an Industrial Edge Virtual Device onto the Industrial Edge Management. Industrial Edge Virtual Device is a, an IED that you can run on a hypervisor like VMware ESXi, and that's the one that's released for productive use. I will be using VMware Workstation because I'm just doing some testing. Anyway, if you need more information about the Industrial Edge uh, Virtual Device, so the IEDD, just speak to your local Siemens contact. Okay, so now you have the LVA, the template file for your uh, virtual Industrial Edge device or Industrial Edge Virtual Device. So if you're using VMware Workstation, uh, you go to open a virtual machine you can then select this template and you need to give it a, a, a suitable name uh, so for me it's going to be ivd 2505 2022 so just a date today uh, and then you can import this this template file so this is going to create a new virtual machine based on this template so it should already meet the minimum requirements although i would probably uh, adjust it a bit once it is imported uh, the thing to note here is that vmware workstation while it works here it's not supported for productive environments if you want to use an ivd in a productive environment you should be using vmware esxi and i might create a, another video showing you how to import this into uh, esxi but the process is rather similar okay so as you can see a new uh, virtual machine was created uh, with 8 gig of RAM, 4 processors and 15 gig of hard drive. Uh, you can change this, these things later on. I know that I will be using more than 15 gigs. I'm already going to expand it to, to 30 gig. But if you're not sure if you're going to need more or not, you can just leave it as it is. Uh, the next important thing is by default, as you can see, uh, both network adapters are assigned to be behind a NAT and it's okay for maybe you know a, a test environment but what you need to remember is if your industrial edge device or, or virtual device in this case is behind a NAT this means that you won't be able to access it uh, from outside from uh, I don't know your, your local LAN you will only be able to access it when you are within a uh, this not unless you maybe do some port forwarding so what i would do i'm going to leave one as not that's okay for my use case uh, but the other one i'm actually going to bridge this to um to wi-fi because i'm currently connected uh, over over wi-fi normally you would set it in such a way that one network adapter is maybe talking to the high level system to the industrial edge management wherever you set it up and the other adapter would be on the poc side on the at uh, the shop floor side uh, side so you need to assign um, these connections in a way that works for your specific use case so just uh, give it some thought as to as to how to do it in the best way and in a way that allows everything to to access uh, what it needs to access okay so now I'm going to power on my virtual machine. Okay, so that's up and running now. As you can see, you are offered an opportunity to log in here, but the reality is you don't have root access to the system. Uh, that's really to protect the system from you maybe modifying some files and exposing it uh, to cybersecurity threats. Uh, what you can actually do via this uh, this command line interface is you can log in as a special onboarding user to onboard this device very easily. So there are two ways you can onboard it. Uh, if you go to the IP address, what was it? HTTPS 192.168.137. As you can see, it's asking for a config file. So you can go to your industrial management and create a, a config file. I might create another very short video just showing this bit. Uh, but what I prefer to do is I prefer to use the onboarding or onboarding user. So username and password are both onboarding. And this will then start this local onboarding dialogue. 
and you can go just find the basic options and give it the name so IEDD T5 uh -oh. 25052022 is what I'm going to call mine. You might give it a more meaningful name to yours. Okay, I won't be changing these. I'm happy with the settings of my network. So done. Now proxy, I'm not using a proxy so I can disable it. And now I need to provide my IAM configuration. So my IAM IP address is 192.168.149.137. But it's actually asking us about the IAM app and not the operating system. So we need to provide port 9443. Uh, the IAM uh, mail, so that's the, the user that I'm using on my management. So that's um, admin at edge.com for me. Then a top secret password. Uh, this uh, local onboarding dialog is actually going to use the very same email and password to set up your admin account for this IEVD. So if you don't want this, then go via the normal route. So onboarding via the IEM. Okay, I'm happy with this. Uh, hit OK. Now, a few API calls will be made to create the device on the IEM and to activate the device. Uh, on the IAM, but if everything works fine, if I provided the correct user details and I have networking, this should be the result. So activation was successful. Okay, so if I now go here, refresh it. Yeah, 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 happy with this. Yeah, that's onboarded. And if I use my details, the same ones I'm using for the IAM, the same ones I have provided to onboard my device just a moment ago, I have access to my IEVD. So that's how you uh, create your IEVD out of the OVA template and onboard it onto your IEM via the uh, command line interface.